Hey y'all, welcome back to Mulberry Branch Farm. My name is Ashley. And today I'm just kind of going over what our show season looked like here on Mulberry Branch Farm. Stay tuned guys, there's some really exciting news. So I, I think, I will not be married to my response here, but I'm pretty sure we're done with shows. So there's only one, maybe two on my radar that I think we might end up going to. But today is just really, really just cleaning out the, uh, the horse trailer or the goat trailer, I guess, and getting everything put back together. So we've got all the dirty out here. I've been trying to put things back into my milk room. I've got new goats that I got. I somehow go to goat shows and come back a little bit more um, broke, but more rich in goats. So <laughs> uh, you can tell I'm trying to get everything put up over here. This is just my handy dandy little craftsman um, tool set. It, I'll show you guys. So what it does is I can kind of just pour my tools and just, here. Oh, there it is. So you guys can see, like, I just pull that up and it collapses down. And then on the top here, I can make myself a little, and it rolls back and forth, which is super nice when you're at a show and you bring your whole pharmacy and you bring everything that you could possibly need, even though we always end up needing something other than what we packed. But that's super nice to kind of just throw in the trailer and go. And then when we unload, it's just, it's got wheels on it. We pop it like we've got carry-on luggage and we just roll that sucker onto our stalls and through our tack pens. But that's what we've been doing today is just trying to get caught up and out bush hogging the field, trying to mow, trying to get everything put up because while show season is pretty much finny and I'm getting ready to go over some of those show placings, the exciting ones anyways, not the ones where I'm like, oh, I thought that go would do better. Um, it means that breeding season is around the corner. I have two does that I bred for November. I've bred two does for January and I am patiently awaiting for some of my other girls that I know aren't going to be in the show string, but are wonderful producers and give me wonderful kids. I'm going to have them drop for January and February babies. You guys can see they're just out on the field after it's been bush hogged, enjoying a nice munch on all of that, that freshly cut grass. So it's nice to be out here while it's peaceful and watching these girls kind of mingle and get back into foraging because we have shown three weekends straight. I don't even remember how many shows we've been to this year, but it's a lot more than in the past, y'all. A lot more than in the past. And though last year I didn't kind of keep you guys up to date on what was going on showing because I think last year was just kind of like um, a level setter. You have those, those seasons in your life, they're a level set where you realize you've got some work to do because while you might think something is really, really good, a trained eye says it's good, but it's not the best, but here's how it can be the best. Here's where we need to move towards. So last year was a big level set, um, adjusted a lot in my management. And this year I'm just really seeing the results come through on my girls. But I will say that we've got our first uh, homebred junior Nigerian dwarf as a grand champion two days ago. My first homebred milker uh, got her first grand champion leg. I've got a buck that got a grand champion leg and I have two reserve grand champion juniors that are also homebred. That's so roughly a couple of best eight rosettes in the there season. Well. So we, we, last walked, we walked away with one rosette. So that's, that's a lot. The season before that was two, then one, and now we're at eight. So I feel like I'm starting to get the hang of this. But I will say it takes it takes an entire village to do this. My my daughter shows, Mark shows. I drag them all to the show ring. We all pitch in. My sister in law is an um, American Dairy Goat Association judge. So a lot of times when I have questions or I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at or I have those hard decisions where I really like what I see in her, but what are the flaws that I because I like her so much that I'm not seeing? And she comes and she helps me really dissect my herd and to figure out what I want to do with it and what direction I need to go. And um, we've made some cuts this year, guys, and we've brought in some new bloodlines, all in the fairness of uh, goat breeding for both production and show. We start out a lot of our show seasons in May with the heart of Indiana. And, you know, it's always wonderful to go to these shows. I know some people that raise goats think that shows are, you know, a little bit of a waste of time, but for us, it really is like a labor of love. 
We love going to these different shows and meeting different people and saying hello to friends that we don't really get to see a whole lot rather than at shows because we're all busy. <laughs> we're all goat farmers and we're all trying to achieve the same goal. So that means there's lots of long hours put in behind the scenes in the barn and in um, planning your breeding schedule and picking out the animals that deserve to stay in your herd and in your breeding program and those that need to be called. We, oh my goodness, I can't even really think of how many different shows we've gone to this year. I know that on average, we used to do maybe one, maybe two, if we were really feeling great, a month, our first two years of showing. This is our third year of showing in the ADGA sanctioned shows um, circuit here um, in the tri-state area, which for me, the tri-state is Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky. I did go to a couple of Ohio shows. I mostly stayed in Indiana though. And... When I tell you I am so proud of my girls and guys this year, I, I really am, guys. They, they, show, they show so well. They put in a lot of hard work, both in the pail. They're so patient with us, dragging them all around. And honestly, I, I'm really proud of the, the ribbons and the accolades that we walked away with this year. In most of the shows that we went to, I can probably count on one hand how many times we didn't end up in the um, grand champion lineup in some capacity, whether it was in first or second places at some of these shows. And honestly, to even get that far is a huge honor. It's it's a big undertaking from <laughs> for the breeder, for a fitting team. Maybe if you have lots of people that help you fit your animals or your family that just gives you the support like mine does to go and do these things because it does take away from a lot of other things. The reason that we put in so much work for these shows is that a lot of these judges have to go through training courses. You can't just walk out there and be an ADGA sanctioned judge. There are lots of different training courses. And from what I hear, the TC is grueling. <laughs> and it's really hard to even get your apprenticeship, much less a two-year judge or, you know, up and up and up. So to be able to walk into these show rings and to have judges that have had to pass tests and have to be able to show that they know how to speak and that they also know enough about the goats to be able to make a fair judgment says a lot about your herd when they end up in these grand champion drives. It's a pleasure and it's an honor to have a judge talk to you about what they're seeing in the show ring that day. And I say that with a little bit of pause because some people walk away from shows and I, myself included, a little discouraged. And you just have to keep in mind, this is one person's opinion on one animal on this one day. It doesn't mean that whatever the judge says is that is the end all to be all for this animal. They might be having a bad day. You might be having a bad day, or maybe they're just not showing to their full potential. So that when all those stars align and you do end up in a grand champion lineup, it is so wonderful. And to hear the pros and cons of the animal that you've worked really hard with because barn blindness is a thing within breeders, even the best sometimes have to go and have an appraiser look over them because sometimes working with an animal on a milk stand and clipping them and getting them ready and loving on them, you can sometimes train yourself to only see the good parts and not the parts that maybe need a little bit of improvement and that don't need to be carried on in your herd. And that can be a little bit difficult to do sometimes. So these judges are doing that for, um, every participant that walks in the ring with an animal. And it's a wonderful experience. Um, some of the highlights this year is we had Lunar Howe, our two-year-old Nigerian dwarf buck, went grand champion in ring two under Don Bergfield at the uh, Hoosier Classic. This one was like a big deal for me because it was the most bucks we've ever showed against. And it was a Nigerian dwarf specialty at the show, which means there were like there were tons, <laughs> tons and tons of Nigerian dwarfs. To be able to walk away from with a, a gold and black ribbon at something like that just was so awesome. And he also went on to uh, have best of breed for that. And he's also won um, reserve champion. And there's only been maybe one to two rings where he wasn't um, first place. And if it was, it was either we were having a bad day or I'm like... At one point, he broke his collar in one of our show rings, and I think that was the furthest back that he um, placed in one of these shows, and it was third or fourth. So I'm very proud of him to uh, be able to say that he went and he's brought home two rosettes. One is a grand champion leg. And for those that you, of you that do not understand what I'm saying, when I say that he earned a leg, uh, every dairy goat that becomes a permanent champion must earn three 
champion legs. Three times they came in a ring and came out grand champion. And we actually had some really big wins just as a herd this year. I had my first homebreds bring home rosettes. Uh, the first one that brought me home a rosette was um, Miss Tahila. She has a Lunar Howl um, chicken hawk daughter at a Midsummer's Dairy Goat Show in Martinsville, Indiana in September. It was August. Um, that show was really fun. We had a f quite a few juniors place up in the Grand Champion lineups. Um, bucks were in there both times. We didn't stick around for seniors um, just because that was a two-day show and I only had time to be there for one day. So it was juniors and bucks for us there. Um, we did end up going to um, the Dark County Fair, which does have an open dairy goat show. And at this show, I had um, two grand champion homebred does. So the first one that we had was in our junior ring and that was Miss Purple Uzi. <laughs> She's also a Lunar Howl daughter, but that was my first grand champion um, junior doe ever and she has my barn name in front of her so that's a big achievement for me also in that same show um mulberry ranch farm pocket full of posy was reserve grand champion and the senior doe show uh tiptoe mulberry branch farm tiptoe tulip was grand champion senior doe so we have had a really great year when it comes to showing and it makes it that much more exciting when you end a show season feeling good and on a high because then it just gives you that energy that you need <laughs> to get you through the next season and to push yourself a little bit harder. Everybody has these high expectations and when you meet a high expectation, you're like, I wonder how far I really can go. I wonder how good this could get. So it's really pushing me in my, um, in my breeding program here on the farm and to really hone in the skills of looking at animals and knowing what I'm looking at and knowing which traits I want to keep or that I want to strengthen and other traits that they don't really need to be furthered in my program, which means they go to be a great um, home milker or process to go into a freezer. There's nothing wrong with either one of those things. Cole doesn't have to mean the same thing in every herd here. It means they either go as a pet or they can go in a freezer if I don't feel like they're going to a good home. I'm really excited about our show season for next year at this point. Oh, while well, some people might think like shows are just, they're, they're just like a glorified um, chance to brag, which I mean, I don't, if you have something to brag about and it, you 100% are worthy of bragging on it, brag. Nobody else is going to celebrate your, your wins for you. Celebrate your wins. Don't let someone beat you down and say, well, you're bragging. Now there, there is boasting. That's not a good thing. But nobody else is going to sing your praises. Nobody else is going to celebrate your wins for you. You have to celebrate them. It's something I'm teaching myself this year a lot. But to be able to go into these rings with some really established breeders and really great friends and people that are willing to help you, the sense of community that I feel in the, the goat showing community and the ability to see to track my own improvement and to watch my herd improve. And this should actually have breeders that I really respect say, hey, whatever you're doing, you're moving in the right direction. God bless their soul. Like, it's hard when you, you dedicate so much time to your animals. And this doesn't mean if you don't take them into shows or you don't take them out in the public, like that you, you can't understand the same feeling you absolutely can but when someone comes up and says i really like your stock or i've really seen the improvements or i can really tell you're putting in the hard work it is just it is soul feeding like it, it just it's it just kind of highlights everything that you've been doing and there's nothing wrong with that but i had that happen on several occasions this year and it's nice while i'm celebrating my own wins like this community like really wants to celebrate with you now of course they're like the there are sore losers and there are people that don't like to see other people win. They want to be the winner. I can do that sometimes myself. We're all, jealousy is like a human emotion. We all exhibit it whether we want to or not. But I'm really happy with my show season this year. You know, for some people, those are just ribbons. And I would never do anything crazy or unmoral or unjust just to get a ribbon. We have worked our tails off and we have sacrificed and we've really <laughs> sacrificed in lots of different ways to try to make to make a marked improvement in our herd. And it's nice to get the recognition for it, both in something tangible like ribbons or rosettes or accolades for my, my barn name, but also to kind of get that camaraderie 
at these shows and people to just say, hey, I, I know you're doing a, a good job and I know you're, you're moving in the right direction. I've seen a, a marked improvement. It just, it feels good. And I use these shows as a tool to better my herd. Um, one of the things that we've loved about Dairy Goats is that everything on the Unified Scorecard is to have a long producing dough. They focus on longevity and they po focus on productivity. And a lot of the conformational marks that they'll, they'll have, like good strong feet and legs. Well, I mean, if she can't walk around and feed herself and, and move throughout the pasture, she'll, she won't be able to be productive because her legs and her feet are broken down. If she's a narrow doe or she's narrow through the hip, she's not gonna be able to, to pass kids easily, which means that there's a marked health risk with her having babies, which for a dairy goat, that's what produces a lactation, is a gestation, a, a full-term pregnancy, a birth, and lactating. <laughs> so I kind of have to have those things. Um, in there so I, I love that the way that they judge them is so that they can be long living and long producing and I love that and I love the show world for that in the dairy goat world at least <laughs> I don't have a lot of um experience in other show worlds so I can't really talk to that but if you show something else or this video has hit you in some type of way drop it down in the comments share your experience do you show goats what do you show? How was your show season? Did it turn out well? Did you see a marked improvement or did you find that you needed to, to maybe raise the bar a little bit, aim a little bit higher? But guys, I am so happy that you stuck around with me to go over some of our show wins from the 2024 season. It was a blast. I can't wait for 2025. Still got some kidding videos to come, so make sure that you're sticking around for that. But in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for spending your time here with me on Mulberry Branch Farm. I hope that you are all staying safe out there and being kind to one another. God bless you. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye, y'all.